Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Podcast on Fifth Ave. It was a long week of hockey for sure. A lot of really good and one really terrible um, happening. It, yeah. Uh, so in, in the game, we're recording on Thursday, the game on Wednesday in New York. Of course, uh, Sid was knocked out of the game due to an elbow to the head from Jacob Truba. And it was a whole thing in and of itself because nothing happened except that Sid left the game. There was no penalty. There was nothing. He, he didn't get tossed. There's probably going to be no disciplinary action just because of what we know the NHL tends to do in these situations. But the the game itself, the Pens were playing really well up until that moment. They took a, what, two-goal lead, and then it literally felt like everything changed. It the the whole tone of the game, Sid's departure just really impacted everything. And I know that you both said that the the guys kind of said that that wasn't the case, but I feel like everybody watching knew. Like they we could just tell mm-hmm. that things were were not the same as they were. And that's not what you want to see when you're trying to close out a series against a team. It's just, and in general, you don't, a, a guy with a, a history of head injuries being knocked out of a game because of a head injury is really scary. So what, from, from your perspective, since you were at the game, what was the, what was the overall feeling it, in the arena before the hit and then after the hit how how did that feel to you yeah i mean the it like you said the penguins are up two nothing crosby leaves the game and then the rangers score three goals in under three minutes and they they just weren't the same after that but i mean if you want to like get into like the actual hit itself first because yeah true true but he's not receiving discipline that came from the new york post today the rangers received confirmation no hearing so no fine no suspension no anything um i mean so it happened 9-14 into the second period. Truba, he, he was trying to play the puck, um, he, so he went to poke check it. And the stick, he took out Crosby's skate, so Crosby kind of stumbled a little. And then so Crosby was, like, kind of falling down, and that's why he had his head down. But it did seem like, like, did Truba not, like, lead with the elbow? Yeah. Yeah. It's So, I mean, it's a dirty hit. It, it should have been, you know, maybe roughing, elbowing. I feel like what they called an elbowing penalty, what, 30 seconds into the game? And then how many elbows did they miss from then on? Because, like, Gensel got elbowed, I think, in the head, too, earlier, in the, like, oh in the game. Lord. So yeah. they met their elbowing quota, and then everything after that fair game. So Crosby, he actually didn't leave right after that. He took two more shifts. Um, if, so he he was out there for another um, – he didn't leave until another four minutes into the game. Okay. I went, so, it, again, we're recording this on Thursday. There is no update yet. We should have gotten that out of the way. There is no update. Uh, after the game, Sullivan said Crosby is being evaluated for an upper body injury. The team didn't fly back to New York after the game. They didn't fly back until Thursday morning. Yeah. So Sullivan did do an availability on Thursday morning, but he's, it was when they were still in New York. So he said Crosby mm. should be evaluated when they get back. Um, right. So we should get some kind of an update on Friday, the morning skate. But as of right now, there's no idea. But I do think it's encouraging. So he wasn't pulled by a concussion spotter. Um, what Sullivan said was the decision to have cr- – because, you know, he played two more shifts. He was talking with a trainer on um, on the bench. And that conversation led to, you know, Crosby um, and the trainer – making the decision together to leave the game. So it's not that a concussion spotter and wouldn't let him come back. Crosby kind of made the decision. Okay. So maybe it's a precautionary thing. Um, but, I mean, you have to assume it is a, a, a head thing. I mean, I, I did see him leaving the arena. Um, he he looked normal, which means, you know, like, he was, was wearing, like, a sling. It wasn't his arm from the fall. It, it, it's got to be the head. Yeah. Um, so, but, I mean, yeah, devastating – uh, loss in that game. Like the players said, you know, they should have been able to overcome it because how many games did they play without Crosby or, you know, like Malkin, yeah. any of the stars, but um, they were not able to overcome it in this one. 
you know, and, and the impact that that, that has to like mid game, like if this team, I think is something a little bit different is like, if they know for a fact that going into Friday night, they're not going to have Sid, they can respond in a different yeah. way compared to losing your captain mid game that yeah. as much as you try and get that out of your head. Okay. We're fine. We can do this next man up. That That's still jarring because we talk all the time about what Sidney Crosby brings on the ice, but Mike Sullivan also all the time talks about what he brings away from the ice. We know his leadership. We know all that. We know the fact that all of these guys continuously tell us that, they want to raise their level of their game because they know Sid is going to do that every single yeah. shift he's out there. So that takes away from a decent amount of it, to be honest. And I think that that probably was the effect that it had. I think the interesting part with the hit too is that obviously it was not great in terms of the elbow kind of sticking it out. I think one of the, I guess, again, the most interesting point is that like, if that was the only time in the game that Truba did it, I think you can look at it as like, eh, okay, def I think it should have been penalized, no doubt. I think oh, there yeah. should have been a penalty called. But he did it to Gensel earlier in the game. Yep. So he kind of showed his hand a little bit. Well, mm -hmm. Truba, so, you know, you look at his disciplinary history, he doesn't really have a history. Um, his last punishment came January 12th. 2020 it was a five thousand dollar fine for slash to Vince Dunn. Um, before that, his only other history was a suspension in 2017 when he was with the Jets. He had a two game suspension for a hit to the head of Mark Stone. Honestly, looked a whole lot like the hit to the head of Crosby. But he has a history of hits like this that have gone um, undisciplined to the mm. season alone that looked like identical <laughs> to this one um, in December. He had a high hit um, to the head of uh, Jujar Kyra on, on the Blackhawks. And then literally, not even 24 hours later, he did the same thing to um, Nathan McKinnon. I, if you're watching yeah. it, we got the stills right here in my story. I got, I got the videos yeah. in my story. But um, those were both this season alone, and he didn't get suspended for it. But um, I, I, I don't know. It just seems like... When if you if you look at those and see that you know he has a little bit of a history of these kinds of hits, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's just it's just not a good look. And I I love that you know you I, I not you know this game and any other time like a player of, around the league has like a you know a dirty hit like this and I feel like the narrative we hear is like well can you imagine if this happened to Crosby they would have you know done this 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 like it's it's like if there's right. a hit on like a fourth line guy they're like can you imagine this Crosby. Crosby, if you think of all like the headshots he's taken over the years, do you know how like the the discipline, the total discipline that players combined have received for hits on Crosby? <laughs> one player has gotten one game. How much? There's <laughs> this happens all the time when people take headshots at Crosby. Mm -hmm. They never get punished. Yep. So this narrative, like, you imagine this happened across? No, it doesn't happen. And this is just the latest example of that, that apparently Crosby's had his fair game. Um, that's what you need to see on the national broadcast. That's what the casual fans want to see, just the stars getting taken out of the game um, and, and no punishment. So, I don't know, the league needs to do something about it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Go ahead, Jenna. Oh, I was going to say, just the, the fact that, you know, again, when you look at the hits to the Chicago Blackhawks player, Anton Nathan McKinnon, Jacob Drew is going to continue to do this until it gets called. If you're not going to mm -hmm. be able, if you're going to, and again, whether you think it should have been penalized or not, that's a whole other topic. But if <coughs> you're not going to call it, the player is still going to do it until it gets called because- yep. Oh, I'm just being physical. Oh, I'm just playing for the puck. And he talked about that today in um, or on Thursday morning. He um, during after Rangers practice, he addressed the media and he kind of explained what it was. You know, he was going for the puck, which he did. I think that's a very valid thing. Was it the extra addition of the elbow? I, I think that can kind of you know that yeah. factor up a little bit. It, it, it didn't seem like just like a bang bang type play. And I think, again, the big thing is that like, if, if this had just happened and this was the only incident of it, you look at it a lot differently than you do. Even when you take the two hits that he's had prior this season that have looked a lot like this out of it. And just mm -hmm. with what he was doing to Gensel earlier in the, I think it was the first period that that mm -hmm. happened. Well, yeah, it was all in the same game and it's insane. Like, and I, I saw 
so I can't remember who it was, but I did see that Jesse Marshall was going back and forth with him on Twitter. Like there was some, some guy who initiated this whole conversation because he tweeted that he was thankful that the NHL is still allowing good, clean hits in regards to the, that. to that. Are you kidding? What? That's not a good, clean hit. And the fact that there are people out there who, so yeah, the players are, who are doing this kind of nonsense are getting away with it and they're just going to keep doing it. But there are people out there who are celebrating it. And that's, can, that's like keeping a certain um, s- sort of like demographic involved in, in participating and watching hockey. And the league is going to be like, eh, okay, you know what? It's fine. At least we got viewers from it. Right. Huh? I I think it does turn off the casual fan, but I mean, like, even if, you know, your Truba did not intend to hit Crosby in the head, I mean, he did elbow him in the head, whether that was intentional or not, like, you you can't just do that, you have Mm -hmm. to be in control of your your elbow, you can't be hitting people in the head like that, like, even if he was not intentionally trying to hurt Crosby, it still can... Um, warrant punishment. I mean, we see suspensions yeah. for for accidental uh, infractions like that. You know, before intent doesn't have to be there to get some kind of discipline. Um, yeah. So, regardless of Truba says he was doing it on purpose, you know, he did. You know, t- he looked like he was trying to play the puck, and he did take Crosby's foot out from under him. That did mm-hmm. cause Crosby to have his head down. So it might have been a high hit, regardless. But he, I mean, he did elbow him in the head. Um, it should have been some kind of suspension. Yeah. There wasn't. We'll have to see if Crosby's in uh, game six, but we know Truba will be in game six because the league doesn't care. (laughs) That is so disappointing. Oh my God. Why don't we take a quick break and we'll be right back. And we're back. So the Rangers forced a game six that will be taking place in Pittsburgh tonight, uh, the day that this recording is released, and potentially, hopefully not, but potentially a game seven. So looking at this Penguins lineup against the Rangers at home tomorrow night, tonight, Friday night, what needs to happen for this team, especially if Sid is going to be out of the lineup? What what needs to go down in order for them to clinch this series at home against the Rangers? They need depth scoring. They've only gotten depth scoring in, in the home games. I mean, um, they've gotten – I mean, the stars have showed up, which is really nice. But, if I mean, especially with Crosby being out, depth scoring is going to be so huge. It seems like these games, they either get – like incredible performances from the stars or only depth scoring, never both. Um, so yeah, those uh, the depth guys need to step up. Um, obviously Malkin, if Malkin is going to be the, the top line center, as he's done many times before when Sid's out and Malkin elevates his game, you're going to need him to do that. Yeah. Um, Gensel continuing this run he's on. I mean, you look at the last three playoffs combined, he has a total of three goals. Um, he has what seven through um, the first five games. Uh, this the goal streak he's on. So he have goal. He has goals in every game. Um, there there hasn't been a a player with a longer goal streak in Penguins franchise history than Gensel, other than Mario Lemieux. Mario Lemieux's done. It. He's had two seven goal streaks and seven game goal streaks and then one six game goal streak which which is insane <laughs> um I tweeted like do you think this is dad's strength because you know players talk about that all the time it's normally after they have the kid I mean Gensel's gonna be a dad in August um so I don't know if this is early dad strength but um it's just really encouraging to see this kind of run from Gensel um more, it's more of the Gensel we were seeing in the first two playoff runs he had uh, with the team, not so much the last three. He just needs to keep that up, but they also need some help uh, down the lineup too. Yeah. And I think that kind of ties in too with getting to Shesterkin, rattle mm-hmm. him again mm-hmm. at home. I tweeted yesterday when we were at the game kind of jokingly, the Igor chance at MSG are a whole lot different than the <laughs> Igor chance at PPG, Paints Arena. Um 
you got to get to him. I mean, the fact that he's, he's, I, I don't know exactly the numbers just because I math and Steelers schedule aces my head a million different places, but um, his save percentage has <laughs> been brutal this yep. series. Absolutely brutal. I mean, even in the loss, they still scored three goals on him. The way in which they scored those goals too. I mean, Jake Gensel pulled almost a Sidney Crosby and banked it off of Shesterton's foot off the skate and into the back of the net. You got to get to him. You got to get to him yeah. early again. I mean, we saw a lot of really good things yesterday too, towards the end of, or on Wednesday. I don't even know what day anything is anymore. <laughs> uh, down the stretch, there were some really good looks. They were trying for a lot of the tip-ins, but just go back to keeping it simple. The yeah. way that, the way that they did in the ways that they were able to chase him in both of those games. I think that's going to be a huge factor for him coming into knowing the intensity of this game. And is he yeah. going to crumble under the pressure or is he going to go out there? Are his guys going to have his back? And is he going to pitch, you know, a shutout or a one or two a game like he did so much during the regular season against yeah. this team? So I got it. I've got okay. the numbers. I got the numbers pulled up. So oh. for context, regular season, he had a 2.07 goals against average. This series through five games, he has a 3.99. Um, regular season save percentage was 9.35. This series, it's 9.05. Um, yeah, and then obviously he's gotten pulled um, twice. So, and a lot of that is like the tip ins, the redirects, those kind of dirty goals right in front of the crease that are hard to stop. Yeah. So. That's yeah. what they need to keep doing to beat him. But again, I mean, the crowd. I He hasn't talked since after game two, so he hasn't talked since playing those games, and uh, he hasn't been made available. But um, I'd love to know, like, his thoughts on, on the crowd because, it, you know, we were we, we, talk, we talked last week about the atmosphere at MSG and how crazy it was. I was not expecting that at PPG Paints Arena just based off of it's not the loudest building in the regular season, but I mean, it was it was insane. Those two mm-hmm. games, they're they're chanting, they're doing the Igor like fifty seconds into the game, both games, like yeah. <laughs> the game just started. And then, I mean, when he got yanked the last game, they're chanting, "We want Igor!" And like, can you imagine just like hearing that at the beginning of the series? I mean, how often did we talk about you know, oh my God, it's going to be the Vesna probably heart winning goalie against the Penguins backup, and now it's the Penguins number three. <laughs> and Igor's gotten yanked twice, and the fans are cheering they want him because um, the Penguins should have just uh, had his number, it seems like, at least those home games. But yeah, I don't know. They're living in his walls. Yeah, that's yeah. been huge. And honestly, they're going to need to find a way to bounce back from the Rangers' physicality because – in the very first period of this series, that was when the the Rangers really laid it on thick and it was looking like the Penguins weren't really going to be able to respond well to, to the way that they were just throwing their bodies around on the ice, but they did in that game. And last night after it was a, it was kind of a different thing because it, the, the hits eventually injured somebody and took him out of the game but it is going to need to be something where they can just they can kind of like live in that short term memory and start to sort of go back to that letting the rangers tire themselves out again like cuz that's really what happened in in game 1 they they just gave it they like pedal to the floor on in that in that first period and then they were just totally gassed and i think that the penguins are going to have to play smarter than the Rangers because the Rangers are desperate right now and they don't want to be eliminated from the playoffs. So they're doing literally whatever they feel they have to do to stay in this series. And the Penguins just kind of floundered in, in response to that last night. So they're going to have to really keep their heads on straight tomorrow, tonight, Friday night. And not let that rattle them the the way that it did. And again, it's it's a different thing whenever it takes out your best player, but there's a good chance Sid's not going to be in the game. So they really are just going to have to be like, whatever they do, just keep going, keep playing, playing our style, playing our game, and don't let them and their stupidity knock us off of what we know we have to do to win because it, we've seen the Penguins outplay the Rangers quite a bit in this series. So we know that it's possible, but that's, that's going to be 
pretty critical along with the other things because yeah the rangers are really just clawing fighting and trying to stay alive which yeah of it, course yeah it's it's not even that they had a response to that physicality you know in, in the first game they just kind of had to withstand it because it, mm-hmm. it's not it's not something they can sustain for i mean when we're looking at you know the first 10 it was really the first 10 minutes of the first period in game one when they were really laying it on heavy, it it really just dropped off so significantly after that. I mean, they were still physical, but it was not to that level it was in, in, you know, the first 10 minutes. I mean, the first 10 minutes of, like, game one, I'm, like, text my friend, like, I'll probably be home for my birthday this year because my birthday is this month. I was like, I don't (laughs) think this is going to last very long. But then, you know, once you see, like, the Rangers, they just couldn't sustain that. It's like, okay, if they can make it out of this period – I mean, they can they can beat the Rangers. It's not the Rangers just can't out hit the Penguins all game um, and yeah. win that way. I mean, Ryan Reeves has really kind of been like a non factor this whole mm-hmm. series for all yeah. the, the how angry like Penguins fans are about like him not playing here and um, getting the playing time when he was here and the, and the Penguins getting rid of him. He's 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 not a factor in this series. No, he's not. I mean, he has had a couple of heavy hits, but um, I mean, a lot of times you just don't don't notice him. I mean. Yeah. He looks like a refrigerator skating out there. I don't know. <laughs> like he can't hit you if he can't catch up to you, and yeah. that's kind of a lot of this. I mean, what he's had a couple of. Honestly, the most I've noticed him is when he's arguing with Mark Friedman, which is yes. Which is I wanted Mark Friedman to fight him so just, oh God. just for it, like just just <laughs> for the storylines of everything. Like this series has had absolutely everything <laughs> at this point. Like I feel like Game One, the triple overtime was a month ago. Yep, <laughs> it really does. Yep, this series has had absolutely everything, and just oh my goodness. So I, I will will quickly before you know we move, um, take a break, but. You talk about being smart. You talk about not taking dumb penalties or anything like mm-hmm. that. That falls on Evgeny Malkin. That, I think that's going to be a huge thing for me because we saw last or Wednesday night, I keep, again, who knows what day anything is. That, that doesn't matter. The Rangers got under his skin a little mm-hmm. bit and they know that they can do that. What was that Kevin Rooney when he got the um, roughing penalty by the benches? Was that like mm-hmm. Kevin Rooney? Yeah. Exactly what he was doing. Players know that they can get under his skin and we talk all the time and we hear Mike Sullivan talk all the time about, you know, Gino needing to be smart in those situations. That is a situation going into game six. That is something his composure has to be there. And we've seen a lot of times where it can be. And I think if this team wants to close the series out, wants to be able to give their team a little bit more rest, knowing that the Bruins and the Hurricanes are going to have a game seven, that is one of the huge factors that is going to be a big talking point on, you know, if there's dumb penalties taken, yeah. especially by Malkin. Yeah. Can I just say before we go this, um, do you guys see they were chanting Igor at PNC Park, like Pirates fans? It was the day after game four, they're chanting Igor at PNC Park. I like, oh can you imagine, like, they're playing the Dodgers. What What is going through the mind of the Dodgers players? Like, what the hell? <laughs> they're like, what's happening what? here? <laughs> Who is Igor? I don't know. I just think that's so funny. <laughs> There's one it. thing, like, Pittsburgh fans love. It's, like, chants like that. Like, going back to, like, Cueto, that, it reminded me of yep. the Cueto chants. Like, like Igor is about to drop the puck. Like, <laughs> 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 Igor is about to drop the puck, and then was it Russell Martin? Russell Martin's gonna hit a homer right here off of Igor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Pittsburgh yeah. is unmatched. <laughs> they, need to, they need to get in his head like that. I mean, it, it that has to be something that, that affects him. And Gallant did say, after he pulled him in game three, he did cite the crowd as being a factor. Um, yeah. He said, you know, the crowd was going crazy, which I thought was kind of crazy for him to even mention that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't think I would I would have liked the coach saying that if I was just certain that the crowd was, you know, maybe getting to me a little. But I don't yeah. know. The fans need to turn it out. and um, That and then the Lou chance, the Louis Domingue. Amazing. That's also incredible, too. I mean, well, he had like mm-hmm. 32 saves. What was it in game three? They're chanting yeah. Lou after every single one. <laughs> yeah. um, it's just it's just really cool to see how the goaltending storyline has played out this series. Um, not that Louis Domingue has been great. I think he has 
exceeded expectations or, yeah. or you know at least lived up to expectations i just think expectations were just not very high or very low yes he's, he's doing better than expected but we did not expect much he is the number three goalie no one no one thinks he's the best winning goalie he's doing what he needs to do the penguins just need to get some secondary scoring and everything to you know help him out um and play tighter uh, defensively so yeah We'll see what happens. Uh, let's let's take another break. We'll be right back. And we're back. One of the more fun things about the NHL playoffs is the way that the different arenas kind of embrace certain things uh, in in this season. And that kind of adds some some comic relief in an otherwise very stressful time of the year. But Jenna, I know that you said there were some things that were going on at Madison Square Garden last night. So why don't you clue us all in for those of us who could not attend this game? What was going on? Well, Taylor and I joked about this. This was probably one of my favorite things. Just like little things like this really just get you going. Um, In the first intermission of game five at MSG, it's New York City. So you have, you know, your nightclubs, all the, you know, big, big places to go, big things. And the DJ scene. So they had a DJ there, Nikki Romero, who you say the name, you're like, okay, who is that? But he has a song with Avicii. Um, I forget what it's called, but it's one of those, you'll hear it and you're like, oh yeah, I definitely know that song. So they were like teasing him that he was going to be the intermission guy. Sorry. They were, you know, pumping him up. That was my team. Um, they're, you know, Hey, Nikki Romero to intermission, all this. They had this huge DJ stand, kind of like the penguins DJ. Although I'm not going to lie to you, Nikki Romero, great DJ. The Penguins DJ gets the crowd involved. The crowd was not even close to involved. This guy is like trying to get Madison Square Garden absolutely hype. He's like, get loud, MSG. <laughs> was it one nothing or two nothing after the first? I, I, I it was one nothing. Oh, it was one nothing yeah, after the first, and then they scored. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so like the, the sales had been taken out of MSG at that point. <laughs> And this DJ is trying to get the crowd going. I give him a heck of a lot of credit because he was going for it. And obviously the crowd got into it when the Rangers scored and came back. But it was like he was doing DJing at like an old folks home. (laughs) Trying to get people going. And they had like, they kept going to crowd shots and people like up close to the DJ were like the first three rows down from him were like, let's go. And then everybody else was like. (laughs) It was nothing. It was it was one of the funniest things. I'm like, oh my god, this guy's trying to be so hype, and I give him so much credit, but no one is hype. Honestly, the most hype I got, and in any of these games, there, it's like they do all these like celebrities, like New York celebrities there, and it's like it's cool. I mean, like the the way they introduce it, it's like they start showing like clips of that person's work or whatever, then they cut to him in the crowd. That's like someone from SNL. It's like maybe it's like with so any of the other athletes from the New York teams. When I, I can't remember which game this was, but like we're there and they start showing clips of Back to the Future. I'm like, hold up. Like I have seen Back to the Future like 200 times, like all three of them. It is my favorite movie. And they cut to Michael J. Fox and I'm like, I, I, I like needed some time to recover. It's like, this is the greatest like, day. Like, uh, if you're watching, like I, I'm obsessed with Back to the Future. Look at that! Look at my little. Oh my god! Marty Love Marty it. My outfit. Why? Taylor <laughs> Mar- like, yeah, Michael J. Fox being there was like the greatest. Um, uh, he was wearing. I don't know if it was an Adam Fox jersey or it was like him. I don't know if there's some <laughs> family ties there. That was funny. Um, that was a joke, but um, <laughs> <laughs> because he was like family ties but and no anyway really cool to see him not even gonna lie yeah (laughs) keenan thompson was there keenan thompson was there game one and wasn't he the guy in mighty ducks that he started out as like a fan and then they like 
brought him onto the team. And that's when, like, when Casey to Smith went down and Louis is in, I'm like, dude, if they lose one more goalie, they might have to pull Keenan Thompson up. From Stranger Things was there on Wednesday night, and that got me kind of excited. because Oh, my goodness, crazy. Wow. That was kind of cool. They, they came out with Fish, though. And, like, again, great music. Not, yeah. not really my, you know, huge taste, so I'm kind of, like, eh, indifferent about it. But, like, I'm like, that's who you're leading with this game? We have an elimination potential game, and, like, you're leading with Fish? There, <laughs> there is a Fish banner in that building. Yeah. Like, to the, to the right of where we sit, it's, like, Fish, and then it says, like, Home of, uh, like, it was, like, uh, 13 consecutive nights they played at the Garden. So yeah. they were, there's a banner for for Fish uh, right right next to the Billy Joel banner for, like, the mo- he has, like, the most performances at MSG. Um, so he has a banner there. I did see jokes, like, game one after, you know, Casey went out. Like, there are tweets, like, uh, just FYI, Billy Joel's the e-bug tonight. <laughs> just because he's up the <laughs> so much. Like, but uh, he was not the e-bug. Reed Robertson e-bug. By the way, I heard... That game one, Reed Robertson, he was like the D3 goalie out of Manhattanville College. You know, if Louis Domingue had gone down in, in triple overtime, they would have had to put this poor college kid in. That was his first day as the e-bug. <laughs> like, <laughs> poor guy. Can you imagine? No! I do. So I, I, I'm pretty sure it happens. It's after Casey goes down. He has to go down there and get ready just in case. Um if that's like your first day of a job, it's triple overtime, and you're sitting there with your gear kind of ready, I'd be screaming, crying, throwing up. I, I could not imagine. Yeah, that's the emotion. That's just like <laughs> I, I, you don't, you, you're just like, I, I'm, I'm dead. I'm done. Yeah. I, it's over. I wouldn't yeah. even make it onto the ice. I would, I would probably <laughs> topple over before I even got there. Just whatever. Call it. Call it a game. I can't. Sorry. Yep. That's insane. I do want to give a shout out at Madison Square Garden, though. Their tacos were phenomenal. I like Love they the taco. so usually, and um, Taylor can attest this too. But like for um, at games, they have like media meals where it's you know like catered food, or you feel like you're like going to a wedding and like going through a buffet. At MSG, you get a voucher to go to whatever concession stand you like. Which, yeah. as a reporter, oh. you're like, this is the dream. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. I was like, I would absolutely kill for like a nice beer right now. Not going to lie. You oh. could. You could. Like, yeah. And then I'm like, and then I'm like yeah, I have to be on TV. It's a, so like, yeah. it's a $25 concession voucher. They don't expire. So, I mean, you could stack your vouchers and then like just <laughs> like, have a meal for yourself. There's a game seven. <laughs> um I have four dollars yeah. left, so yeah. I, don't, I know, I know. Like Penguins PR, they're talking how they have like a couple, like just like left over from the, the previous game. It's like you could probably just buy like a, a portion of the Rangers like franchise now <laughs> with all your concession vouchers. But yeah, no, I've been going for the pizza every game, which incredible. Um, so good. Yeah. So yeah, I and you, twenty five dollars. I don't know you get like two big slices, like a drink. What a what a setup. But speaking of food. Um, spicy pork and broccoli. Yes, I, I feel like it's just not transitions. It's it's Love kind it. of been beaten to death at this point, as Pittsburghers do. Yeah, <laughs> there's something like fun like that. It's absolutely yep. been beaten to death. But you know, I, so I, I there's no one that doesn't know this. But Louis Domingue, between first and second overtime, he he's not thinking he has to go in. The post game meal for the players: spicy pork and broccoli. He dips into it early. Oops, Casey goes down in double overtime. Louie has to go in full of spicy pork and broccoli. He mentions it after. It's a big thing. Um, the Penguins come back home. Spicy pork and broccoli is a concession now at, um, what is it, Nakama? The, it's yeah. like Japanese, yep. Chinese food in one thing. But it's, yeah, they got spicy pork and broccoli. Incredible to get that lined up like to get all that food in early and get it on the menu but it on it looked a whole lot better than what louis ate because if you saw like alan walsh tweeted the picture that louis took of what he ate honestly not the best whatever he yeah. said was like giving it too much credit it looked kind of gross yeah. um yeah. what what's it ppg paint serena behind section 105 if you want to go 
looks pretty good. You can get it with like lo mein or fried rice. But not only it that, was- it was the medium meal. Like <laughs> the downstairs That's has right. Like, it was the medium meal for for game I three, spicy that. pork and broccoli, and that that on it that looked better than what Louis ate too. But um, yeah, everyone just going going real in on this uh, spicy pork and broccoli thing. It's amazing. You just love to see it. And we do that in Pittsburgh. We just take things and run with them until people never want to hear those words together in a sentence ever again. But right now we're cool with it. So, yeah. Are they serving it again at the game Friday night? I, I So the medium meal, I mean, I think it's definitely changed. Honestly, I don't eat the medium meal anyway, especially now that for play- playoffs up in the press box, like the free food, we got the pretzel nuggets back. The soft pretzel nuggets, they went away with COVID. Oh. Round of applause for the pretzel nuggets coming back, but um, they're back in they're back in the press box. Um, I don't know, but yeah, it's definitely at uh, home games for for fans. Uh, cool. and it's the Nakama. It's it's normally a sushi stand. They still got yeah. the sushi, but um, you can get spicy pork and broccoli too. Uh, behind one hundred and five, so yeah, definitely there. You go. Games. Yeah, if you're gonna be at the game on Friday night, make sure you load up on all your spicy pork and broccoli so that we can. Look, I win. My, I don't know what y'all's Chinese orders are. I get chicken lo mein or beef and broccoli. I've never had pork and broccoli. I ordered pork and broccoli like just from the place down the road um, to see what all the hype was about. Mm. Not that good. Like I would not get it again. Okay, <laughs> okay, good to know. Stay away from it then. I <laughs> or stay away. Like beef and broccoli, chicken and broccoli, just so much better. I don't. I don't. That's just me. I love beef and broccoli. Big fan. Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder how far it would be with it. I could see it. I have to go around to the rest of the goalies in the organization, get their Chinese food orders. <laughs> yeah. Please Honestly, let us know. It's a great story. Uh-huh. I love it. Yeah. Yep. Lou, see what their go-to meal is. I, like I like Taylor Gauthier, their goaltending prospect in the WHL. He's having, he's having a really good playoffs, and I'm tweeting highlights, and people are replying, like, do, do you know what his Chinese food order is? I'm like, I don't know. I might come to that, though. We Him... He's a righty. Alex Doria is a righty. Louis Domingue's a righty. I don't know where the Penguins are finding these guys because 119 goalies play in the regular season. Only seven of them catch with their right hand, including Louis. How do the Penguins have three of them in their system now? It's crazy. I don't know. But there's something about these right right catching goalies, I think. But yeah, so that's that. I'll next time I talk to Taylor Gochia for the story, I'll ask him what his Chinese food order is. We'll report back here. Information we need to know. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Well, everybody, thank you so much for, for tuning into another episode. If you're going to the game tonight, stay safe. Make sure you get some spicy pork and broccoli and subscribe to us wherever it is you listen to podcasts or on YouTube uh, so that you can catch New episodes every week. They typically drop Thursday, but because of the Pens game this week, it was a day delayed. But we will see you next week for another new episode.